this week in the aftermath of Easter said that the disciples were going around in Acts 4.33 and they were bragging and boasting like, hey, we walked with Jesus. We were with him. He died. But then three days later, he got up and he rose from the grave. And it said that great grace was on them. Some translations said that great favor was on them and that it was evident to all. That's one of those things when you walk into a room, the atmosphere shifts because there's a residue on your life because you've been with Jesus. See, we're never designed or called to just blend in. We're designed to be distinctive. That's what Matthew 5.13 is. To be salt and light is to be distinctive. So I was at H-E-B the other day. I feel like I'm there a lot. We have four kids. And so my wife's always like, I need some more bananas. We eat so many bananas. It's, I think we're eating like six or seven a day. I don't know what's happening. We have lots of potassium in our family, which is, I guess, a good thing. You don't have a beard like this without potassium. So, so I'm at HCB, and this lady walks up to me, and she's like, oh, hey, we're excited. We're going to be coming to Easter. My mom's over here. She wants to meet you. I was like, okay. So I walk over, and this lady, she looked a little feisty when I walked up, and she was like, nice to meet you. And I was like, nice to meet you. And she goes, he doesn't look that bad up close. Like, what does that mean? And I was like, hey, I'm Pastor Daniel from First Second Assembly of God. And I invited her to another church. I'm like, you're not going to throw out insults like that. No, I invited them. They showed up to Katie. Give them a shout out too. It's okay. I don't know what that was. If it was a compliment, I'm not sure what happened. But it hurt a little bit. So in the aftermath though, I believe God wants to get our attention, whether you're a brand new believer, whether you have fallen away from God and got caught up in the prodigal life and you're coming back. Maybe somebody invited you today, told you there was going to be giveaways and free TVs and you showed up and you're like, Psh. but you showed up and you're in the room, you're watching online, you're at Katy, you're in Uganda. And here's the truth. I believe God is, 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 is trying to get our attention and draw us in closer to his presence because Easter is not a one and done. You know, Easter statistically is the biggest invited day. People show up, they put on their best, and they leave. But listen, we know that there is church and life and a movement and a revival that has taken place. And it's not just a one and done. And I believe that God wants to get our attention to build upon an even stronger foundation. We have a pretty simple mission here at Hope City. We want people to know God. Come on, if you know it, find freedom, discover their purpose ultimately make a difference. And we do this by developing strong roots. Come on, somebody say roots. So for this post-Easter weekend service, if you're taking down notes, the title of this week's sermon is, How Are My Roots? Let's pray. Father, thank you for ears to hear you, a mind that's ready to understand, and a heart that's postured and positioned to receive and absorb all that you have for us today. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. How are my roots? The Holy Spirit, John 14, 26. The Lord is always speaking. By the way, the Holy Spirit is always speaking. Like you mean, he don't speak to me. Well, you must have some other things in your life distracting you from being able to hear him because he's always speaking. Some might call it intuition or a gut check or a nudge, but the Holy Spirit is always speaking. John 14, 26. Before Jesus ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father, he left the Holy Spirit here as our comforter. Another translation says our helper who helps. See, as a, as, a, as a husband, a father, and a leader, I need the help of the Holy Spirit all the time. Say all the time. All the time. I mean, all the time. You need it to not only navigate life, not just survive life, but to thrive and flourish and become who God has called you to become. So we, we pulled into Lowe's, and uh, I know a lot of you are not baffled by that because you assume I, I'm at Lowe's a lot. You're like, you're like a modern-day lumberjack. Of course, you're at Lowe's. <laughs> I was buying air filters, okay, super manly. And so uh, as we're pulling in, there's these two guys trying to pull out a tree that had died from the, th from the big freeze that we had here a few weeks ago. And, and boy, they were, they were struggling. I was like, I've got to watch. This is better than Hulu and Netflix. We've watched everything. Everything has been watched. And so I'm like, I'm pulling around, I'm posting up and watching. I'm like, this is amazing. And they were doing it all wrong. They had a rope and a, and a chain, I think a bungee cord. And the guy kept yelling, Billy, you're doing it all wrong, Billy. It was like, uh, you ever seen the movie Joe Dirt? It's like, is this happening in real life? This is amazing. And, and it took them a while. They were wrestling this tree, and grabbing it. I was like, That's, you're doing it all wrong. Like, you can Google this, YouTube this. But this is good for me. This is entertaining. I need this. And so uh, all of a sudden, they were able to pull the tree out. They underestimated, in all of that wrestling, they underestimated the roots. 
So ask yourself that question again. Do a little self-checkup. Do a little self-examination. And ask yourself, how are my roots? How is my foundation right now? Because healthy roots, if you're taking down notes, you can write this down. Healthy roots produce healthy fruit. Healthy roots produce healthy fruit. Your life and your root system has to be built on the right thing. That's why we can't stress enough that Matthew 6, your daily intimate relationship is essential. You have to spend quality time with the Lord every day because this whole thing, I don't know how you were raised up. I don't know what kind of experience you have in church, but Hope City, this is not built on religion. This is built on relationship with a God who loves you so much that he doesn't call you damaged goods or fragile, but he calls you by name fearfully and wonderfully made. He wants a relationship with you. So we can't stress it enough. He wants an intimate daily relationship. The second thing is he wants you to get connected. There's two specific things in the Bible. One of them specifically is the church. The heartbeat of heaven functions through the local church. That's why we can't stress it enough. Get connected to the house. Thank you for your overwhelming enthusiasm. Go through growth track. Jump on the dream team. Y'all, where's the dream team at? Come away. And if you're like, ah, I want to be a part of that, you can. Go through growth track. Be a part of the dream team. Be a part of something that's bigger than yourself, that's reaching literally thousands of people. We're big in the discipleship as well. We want to walk with you so that you can grow and ultimately become who God has called you to become. But this is what the Bible says in Psalms 92, verse 12 and 14. This is the Amplified. This is what the Bible says about the house of God and being connected. Watch this. So we're talking about foundation. We're talking about roots. The righteous will flourish like the date palm, long-lived, upright, and useful. They will grow like a cedar in Lebanon, majestic and stable. Planted, say planted. In the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. Now pause right there real quick. They say statistically the average full-time attender. Have you ever met that person? You're like, hey, you should come to my church. They're like, oh, we, I, already got, I already got a church. You're like, cool, cool. What church do you go to? Oh, you would ask, uh, you would ask that. Brotherly Love Tabernacle of Faith Praise Center TV. Like, that sounds fully made up. I can't even find a website for that. But like, who's the pastor there? And they're like, you would ask that one. It's um, it's uh, you don't talk. It's um, I think he's sw- I think he sw- They switched it up. I'm not sure. Because here's the reality. They say a full time church attender, full time. How many of y'all consider Hope City your home church? Come on, wave at me. Awesome. They say statistically in Americanized Christianity, the average full-time church attender goes 1.5 times a month. See, to get your roots down deep, you got to get in the house of God. It doesn't mean you have to be here every week. Like we're not taking attendance like Linda. Good job. (laughs) But the truth is you got to get your roots down deep. That's why connectivity and connection to the house. That's why being a part of a connect group is huge. Do life together, y'all. We're better together. Look at the person next to you and say, we're better together. Come on. So planted in the house of the Lord, flourish in the courts of our God, growing in grace. They will thrive and bear fruit and prosper in old age. They will flourish and be vital and fresh, rich in trust, love, and contentment. In order to be planted, in order to have a healthy root system, we have to have the right foundation. So this second post-Easter question I want you to ask yourself, is my life built on the rock or is my life built on sand? Jesus walks us through this in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. I love the message translation and the way it reads. It says, these words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life, homeowner improvements to your standard of living. They are foundational words, words to build a life upon. If you work these words in your life, you're like a smart carpenter who built his house on a solid rock. Rain poured, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved the house. Why? Because it was fixed to the rock. Goes on and says, but if you just use my words and Bible studies and you don't work them into your life, you're like a foolish carpenter. Don't be that guy. Who built his house on a sandy beach. When a storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. Psalms 18 verse two says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, my savior. My God is my rock in whom I find protection. He's my shield and the power that saves me and my place of safety. If you're taking down notes, write this down. A proper foundation is not optional. It is a must. Write that down. A proper foundation is not optional. 
This building we're in, we talk about foundation a lot here. I talk about a lot, Pastor Jeremy talks about a lot because it's essential. It's not an option, you have to have a strong foundation. Our next door neighbor, I don't know what's going on, but they're having to redo and restore and rebuild up their foundation. From the moment that their house was built, something was wrong with their foundation. I talked to him and he was like, man, it's, it's costing us a lot of money. They're literally putting things underneath and braces and building it up. I mean, it's wild. Because this building we're in, the walls, the ceiling, everything we see here is only as strong as the foundation it's built on. My life, my my. my my, my husband, my husbanding, my fathering, that's not the right word, me being a husband, me being a father, me being a leader, is only as solid and strong as the foundation that it's built on. And Jesus gives us two options. He said, when you're building your foundation, you've got two options. You can build it on the rock, amen, or you can build it on the sand. So I'm asking you again, what is your life, your family, your assignment, your purpose, your destiny, your future, what is it built on? The rock or is it built on sand? Because the word of God is the rock. Our foundation is our personal relationship with Jesus. The glory is not in the house. It's in the foundation upon which the house is built. I was thinking about this the other day. I have these moments periodically. It happened to me this morning. I was driving with my daughter, Finley. She's 10. And I just got caught up with emotion. It happens to me every time I have the opportunity to preach. Almost daily when I get up and look in the mirror, two things happen. I think, devil, you're going to get tired before I do because I know who I am and whose I am. And then the second one is instantly like, God, you have a sense of humor because you give and take away. And he took my hair and gave me this beard. And if y'all don't think God has a sense of humor, just go to the mall and watch people. <laughs> Town just full entertainment. Just go watch people. But I always have these moments, because y'all have heard me preach, and if you've not heard me preach before, you're going to hear me say it if you keep coming back, which by the way, if you're looking for a good local church, you don't have to look any further. Welcome home. We're glad you're here today. Get your roots down deep. Be a part of what God's doing here. But I always have this moment where I'm overwhelmed with gratitude, because the only reason I've made it this far, the only reason I've walked through struggles and issues, and the only reason I'm still standing and able to take another breath is because the foundation of the rock that my life is built upon. The only reason my wife and I are about to celebrate 17 years of marriage, come on somebody, and that every day we're thriving and not just roommates is because our marriage is built on the rock. The reason our kids are thriving as worshipers and recognize that their praise is a weapon is because our family is built upon the rock. What is your life built on? Is it built on the rock or is it built on sand? Because when storms come, there are no respecters of anybody. The storm hits the saved and the unsaved. So when all hell breaks loose and the shutters are rattling, the rain is beating down, does your house fall apart? Does your life fall apart? When you're squeezed in life, what comes out of you is what's hidden inside of you. What's coming out of you? Is it built on the rock or is it built on sand? That's why we give you guys weekly challenges. How many of you guys have done the first 15 challenge? Awesome. How many of you guys have no idea what I'm talking about? Okay, cool, cool. So here's what we do. We challenge our church every day. Say every day. Seven days a week, every day you wake up, five minutes in the word, five minutes in worship, five minutes in prayer. Just 15 minutes. You set aside that time to spend time in his presence. And I'm telling you what happens. 15 minutes isn't long enough. You're like, 15 minutes went by like that. I want to make it 30. I, I, I want to make it 60. I want to make it 90 premium minutes. I want to get up every day and spend time in his presence. So we've challenged our church for the past year and a half, two years. Do the 15-minute challenge and watch God breathe in your life. We're also a discipleship church. We want to walk with you. It's God's job to change you, but it's our job to walk with you. That's why I did a plug earlier to get connected. One way to get connected and really build your foundation, again, Go through growth track. Be a part of what God is doing here at Hope City and allow God to unlock your gifts and unlock your assignment through the house. We believe that you're necessary and needed in this house because there's things you do that I can't do. Like put in pomade and gel. I, can't do, I don't do that. Now, there's things that God wants to unlock in you. And the reality is every day when you're spending time in his presence and you're building that foundation, you want to get connected to the local church. You want to lean into his presence and spend 
more and more time in his presence. A few weeks ago, I talked about it. The more you get close to Jesus and the closer you lean into his presence, the more the things of the world are no longer enticing. The things that used to draw you in like a moth to a flame, the opposite is happening, and God is romancing you to his heart, saying, get close to me. Start looking more like me. Say the foundation. foundation. The Bible says here in James chapter 1, verse 22, but be doers of the word. It's a big deal. It's foundation. Be doers of the word, not just hearers. It literally is telling us not to just go through the motions, but to absorb and apply the word of God every day. All right, so we talked about foundation. Now I want to shift, and I want to focus more on roots. Look at the person next to you and say, how are your roots? Come on, ask them. Say, how are your roots? Okay, like low-key, how many of y'all looked at their hair roots? Like, you know you did. Barbers, beauticians, hairdressers are like, come see me, girl. Eight inches of regrowth is not popular. All right. <laughs> Look at the other person next to you and say, how are your roots? Come on, ask them. <laughs> Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 and 7 says, now, just as you've accepted Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots, say roots. Grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. That's the foundation that we were just talking about. It goes on and keeps saying, then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Jeremiah 17, verse seven and eight says, blessed is the man or woman whose trust is in the Lord, who trusts in the Lord. He's like a tree planted by the water and he sends out its roots, say roots, by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green. It's not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. Exodus, or sorry, Ezekiel 31, verse 7. A lot of Bible today. Come on, we're a Bible church. We're a Bible foundational based church. We don't want you to think this is our opinion. Ezekiel 31, 7. It was strong and beautiful with wide spreading branches for its roots. Come on, say it again. Roots went deep into abundant water. If you're taking down notes, you can write this down. The strength and the beauty of your life that is evident above the ground is a result of the unseen roots beneath the ground. The, the beauty and the strength that's evident to everyone above the ground is only because of the roots that are beneath the ground. So when you walk into a room and the atmosphere shifts and you walk into a room and peace just follows you and the goodness and mercy of God just follows you, the evidence of that strength and that fight and that boldness and that perseverance and that joy, everything you walk in that's evident above the ground is because of the roots that are underneath the ground. So how's your roots? Ask yourself that again. How's my roots? I remember uh, growing up, so I, I grew up a farm kid. Um, my, fi my family... Literally thousands of acres, corn, soybean, wheat, I mean, just all, all over the Midwest and specifically Ohio. And I remember my grandpa taking me out on some, some outings and, and I'm like, we're like a, I'm like a suburban farm kid. So I'm like rocking J's, but I'm out on the combine and I'm like, are these going to get dirty? Will these get creased? And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And so he started telling me, okay, like, hey, we're going to plow the ground. We're going to do this. And then he opened up his hand and he had a handful of seed. He starts talking to me about the seed. And he's like, when I put this in the ground, you watch over a period of time, it, there's going to be a huge harvest that comes. And I remember thinking, this is incredible. If he's planting that and getting corn, I'm going to plant Legos. <laughs> right? Like, why not? Like, we dug a hole in the ground. I buried the Legos. Come on, somebody. I packed it down. I watered it. I even used some of my mom's good soil. And she's like, where's my bag of soil? And I was using it with the fertilizer and all that stuff. And over a period of time, my grandpa's fields, man, they were flourishing. And nothing was coming of my Legos. And some of y'all are like, yeah, that's ridiculous. Why? Because they both look the same. They look exactly the same. The process is exactly the same. But here's the massive missing link. One was alive because it was a seed. And one was very much dead. Because here's the reality. Sometimes in life, we feel like dirt is getting thrown on us. We feel covered up. We feel almost hidden. And I want you to know today that you're not buried, but you're planted. Say it out loud. I'm planted, not buried. Come on, say it out loud with boldness. I'm planted, not buried. Christine Kane says, sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried. <laughs> you've actually been planted. 
Sometimes we wonder why things don't happen in the exact time that we were hoping for. And I've also learned in my life, and my wife and I have walked through this, we've also learned in our lives that sometimes in God's redirection or almost his silence, there's actually a protection in that. Sometimes in that hidden place, that place where you feel like you're hidden and buried, it's actually a seed that's been planted and you're about to bloom. Come on, somebody, you're about to come alive because we begin to see that soil break through and the crop begin to come through. You're planted. You're not buried. Learning throughout this journey, specifically 2020 into 21, to focus more on a life that's seed, not speed. If things aren't happening exactly like I'm hoping, I stop. I pause, pray. I'm patient and I pray because on the other side of that is a supernatural harvest. Come on. Look at the person next to you and say, your harvest is on its way. Let them know. Because God would not have breathed his life into you. God would not have shaped and molded you into his image if he didn't believe that you were a good seed. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to receive that. I want you to say, I am a good seed. He wouldn't have chosen you if you didn't have a purpose, a destiny, a powerful assignment on your life. Yes, we've all made mistakes, but those downfalls don't define us or disqualify us. There's plenty of mercy for that. There's someone that's standing with you. I said it earlier. That's stronger than the one who's been against you. And you may have a broken past. You may have a situation where you haven't been able to shake the things that you've walked through or the decisions you've made. Maybe you have a ton of dysfunction in your life or your family. It does not disqualify you. Maybe the enemy has been trying to convince you that you don't have a purpose. But I'm here to tell you today that you're a good seed and that you're fearfully and you're wonderfully made. And no matter how broken your past is, God will show up and heal and restore. Say it again, I'm good seed. Come on. Because in life you'll realize, and I said this a moment ago, you realize that dirt gets thrown at you and thrown on you. But recognize in the middle of that, that I'm not buried. I'm not buried, I'm planted. Let me pray for you really quickly. We're not done, but I just felt really... I just felt led in my spirit to pray for somebody right now that's just, you can't even hear anything that's happening in today's sermon because you feel buried. Father, right now, I pray that the supernatural breath of life from only you, Holy Spirit, would begin to fix, heal, and restore to my friends in Uganda, to our friends at Katy, to our friends watching online, even the archive message, and that's in this room today. God, I pray that they would begin to shake off the dirt. They would begin to rise up in bloom. God, they would begin to rise up and recognize that everything that's happened, the things that they feel like disqualified them, the things that feel like are heavy and weighing on them, even generational struggles. God, I pray right now that the things that felt like it was burying them, they recognize today, God, that your hand has planted them and they are good seed. Somebody say amen. amen. And whether it's a mountaintop moment, whether you're deep in the soil, whichever place you're at, I want you to recognize who you are. I want you to recognize that you're a seed every single day. I thought about it on the way over. I was talking to my daughter because she was like, she was like, what are you talking about? I talked to her about roots. I was like, babe, I'm talking about foundation and developing roots. And I said, you know, you're a good seed. And she's like, yeah. And you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of water baptism. She's 10. And I said, you preach girl. <laughs> and then she got done and she was like, now nah, I need to take up an offering. I'm like, okay, all right. <laughs> I see what you've done here. Just like your mom. It was her birthday this week, and we went on a little shopping spree, and I was like, okay, I think we're good. She's like, you said I could get whatever. I was like, okay, at the Dollar Tree. It's ridiculous. But my daughter said, it reminds me of water baptism. You go in, and you, it's the symbolization of being buried. You go in dead, but like a seed, you come back alive and you come out stronger, and you come out better, and you come out on the other side of all your past and all of your struggle. I thought that was good. I said, girl, you need to preach that. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 and 19 says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts. See, you'll, you'll begin to realize that your foundation and your roots, you'll begin to realize when you recognize who you are as daughters and sons, and you recognize that you've been shaped and molded in his image, you'll recognize the importance of putting your full dependency and trust and hope in him. Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. Your roots, come on, somebody say roots, will grow down into God's love and keep you strong, that you would have the power to understand 
as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. John 15, verse four, I love this translation. It says, stay joined to me. That means connected. That means stay close to me. We say this all the time at Hope City. The promises of God don't break when you lean on them. So lean on his promises. It says, stay joined, stay connected. Lean into me and on me, and I will stay joined, connected, close to you. This is Jesus speaking. Just as a branch cannot produce fruit unless it stays close, connected, joined to the vine, you cannot produce fruit unless you stay joined to me. See, then this transformation begins to really happen in your life where, again, you start looking more like Jesus, and then you start looking like the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that God wants to unlock in our lives. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23 says this, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So I want you to ask yourself another post-Easter question. How's my love walk? What's the fruit look like? Do a little fruit check right now. What's the, what's the fruit in your life look like? Because full-on transparency, I, I'm trying to be a little bit more patient. Where's all my impatient people at? My wife all the time is like, babe, you need to breathe. Like, we're like in a rush. You're constantly like, we got to jump in the car. We got to get there. Because I like to be on time. And she wears a shirt that says, sorry, I was late. I didn't want to come. I don't know that you want to be as on time as me, but so patience, I'm developing patience. If I pull into a Chick-fil-A drive-thru, I'm like, how come there's so many people? But then you eat that Polynesian sauce and you're like, okay, I do understand. I also want to unlock, here, here's what I've been asking. I've been, I've been praying this Galatians 5, 22 and 23 over my life this whole week. And I've been asking God, Lord, help me in areas that I'm depleted in. Help me in areas that there's fruit that's kind of spoiling right now in my life. Show me and reveal the blind spots. Another one is I want to have more consistent joy. Like, not like, like I want to, cause you have to put on joy. Come on. You have to remove the heaviness, Isaiah 61, three, and put on the garment of praise because Nehemiah eight ten says the joy of the Lord is your, it's the joy from God to you and through you, but you have to put it on. See, Pastor Jeremy says sometimes when he pulls in his driveway at home, because the week or the day has been stressful, he'll just look in the mirror and be like, I have to do the same thing because when I walk into my house, I can be a thermostat or a thermometer. I can establish the temperature or just tell the temperature. So when I walk in, I smile real big. I'm not saying I do it all perfect, but joy is another area that I want to grow in. Another one based upon the story that Pastor Jeremy told, and now my nickname is the enforcer, <laughs> is I want to be kinder. Come on, I'm pretty kind. I actually dismantled that whole moment. I was like, how big a feller are you? <laughs> if you didn't hear the sermon last week, Pastor Jeremy and I almost got into a full-blown fight. Okay, not with each other, but against about a room of people. Okay, just watch the sermon. It's fine, guys. We're Christians. Amen. <laughs> well, what areas of your life do you feel like, man, that fruit's a little depleted in my life? Throw the verse back up one more time. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is all tied to the vine. It's all tied to your foundation. It's all tied to your roots. I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you with this. Take this Galatians 5, 2, 2, and 2, 3 and read it over your life every day and say, say it out loud when you read it. Say, but the fruit of the Spirit in my life is love. In my life is joy. In my life is peace. Oh, you're one of those blab it, grab it. No, Job 22, 28 says decree a thing and it will be established. If you're weak in any of these areas, start speaking it over you. I am patient. Come on, I am kind. I have goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and for a bunch of you, self-control. Let's go. Especially when you're driving in Houston traffic. Start declaring it over you. I uh, had a friend send me this story about this, this really cool place called um, Biosphere 2 in Oracle, Arizona, it's a scientific ecological system structure that was built to mimic the most perfect conditions from temperature to water to streams to dirt, sand, soil. And they were going to grow flowers and, and fruit trees and 
specifically big trees. They were mimicking things that were happening outside of this structure. And the scientists and engineers said, we figured it out. This is the future. This scientific, perfect condition, ecological system, we've figured it out. It was flourishing. Everything in there was flourishing. Millions spent on research and analytics. And one day, they started noticing that the trees started having a droop at the top. And over a period of time, these trees that were once vibrant and thriving began to droop. And the fruit trees were literally touching the ground. And they looked outside of the structure at the trees and they said, how come none of the other trees are, are doing this? How come none of the other trees are, are falling down and blowing out? What's happening? What, what are we missing? We have the perfect soil. We have the perfect temperature. We have the perfect conditions. And literally, like reverse osmosis filtered water, like everything is perfect. We've thought of it all. We have the perfect controlled environment. I think sometimes we can lose sight of life too because we try to create our own perfectly little controlled environment. Some of y'all are like, how is this making any sense? Let me unpack this a little bit more. They spent more money on research and analytics and this one scientist and one engineer started talking and they said, oh my goodness, we missed one, one huge element. We missed something. And they started going back and they said, yeah, yeah, yeah we, we, we missed it. And it's, it's, I'm, not, I'm not surprised because you can't, you can't taste it. You can't, you can't capture it. You can't even see it. But what did we miss? And this guy says with boldness, the wind. And they started doing research and they discovered that a tree, when the wind and storms begin to blow in life, it exercises and strengthens the bark and it exercises and strengthens the tree and ultimately, it exercises and strengthens the roots. And so for a lot of us, we don't want to deal with storms. It's okay. You can clap. We don't want to deal with winds and waves. We just dismiss them and think like, oh, why me? Why not you? Because what the enemy has thrown at you to break you, God will shift it to shape you and mold you into everything that he's called you to be so that your roots can go stronger and your roots can get deeper. Your life can be bolder. Figured out that the wind was essential to the strengthening of the foundation and the roots of these trees. My, my, my daughter Finley and I, yesterday, we went to the silos. Uh, we had a dream team celebration out there. That's why you got to be on the dream team so y'all can get that invite. And the wind was whipping. I mean, it was, it was a lot of wind. And the wind was blowing, and she said, I took my breath away. And I said, baby, stop and just hold my hand and face the wind for a minute because I knew I was going to preach this. I said, the wind can take your breath and sometimes it can be invigorating. But I want you to say this out loud. This wind's not going to break me. The wind's going to shape me because I want her to know now. The storms and trials are going to happen in life. John 16, 33 says it. Jesus said, in this life, you're going to go through a lot of things. But be confident and have courage and boldness and know that I'm standing with you and I'm for you. The very plan of the enemy to destroy and derail and mess you up, I'm going to use it for my glory and shift it for your good. And that messy situation could become your greatest message. That messy situation, that brokenness, I can turn into a breakthrough. The thing that feels like it's falling apart, I can make it fall into place. I want to challenge you. The wind will shift. The storms will shift your attention and your focus on him if you allow it. I, uh, I was thinking about uh, my mom. She would, uh, she would tell me all the time when I was a kid, and maybe you're a mom in the room, and you're going to be like, why did you say that from the microphone? But I'll, I want all of you to do this today. I want you to roll down your windows and when you're driving, and I want you to put your hand out the window. Have you ever done this? You know, the wind's blowing at you, and you start doing this with your hand? And I want you to say with boldness, I'm good seed, I'm planted, I'm not buried, my foundation and my roots are strong, and devil, the very thing that you designed, you designed to break me, God is turning it and he's shaping me. 
And I want you to take that today and lean against the wind and trust him with audacity and audacious faith and get your roots stronger. Come on, somebody say amen. Could you stand your feet for just a moment? I don't know why I got emotional about my little girl. In that moment, slip your hands towards heaven. God, today I pray, this is a room full of people here, Katie, Uganda, watching online. The God, we want strong roots. We want healthy roots because we know it will produce healthy fruit. If there's any area of our life that has been muddying the waters or depleting the fruit in our life or keeping us from growing and becoming who we're called to be, I pray right now, God, that your supernatural power would fix, heal, set free, and deliver and that you would restore today everything that is broken. Nothing missing, broken, or incomplete. We want to get stronger. We want to be better. We want to become who we're called to become. You can put your hands down for just a moment. If you're here and you say, Daniel, I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to. Or maybe you're here and you say, I fell away, but I want to rededicate my life today. I want roots that are deep into the goodness and the love and the soil of God. The truth is I don't know him, but today I want to. Here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons. We pray because Romans 10, verse nine and 10 says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord. Nobody looking around for just a moment. If you're watching online, you can say, type in the chat, yes. If you're watching at the house party in Uganda, our team is right there on site to help you. If you're at Katy, if you're in this room at West Houston, if you're in additional seating, you want to know Jesus. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to lift up your hand with boldness. Today is my day. I want to give my life to Jesus or rededicate. One, two, three. If that's you, lift up your hand. Man, hands are going up everywhere. Hand, 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 hand. All the way in the back. Hand, hand, hand. Come on, Hope City. Give them a hand. Come on, hand. Hands are going up everywhere. All right, pray this prayer with me, and then Brad's going to come and close it out. Father, it's me. I've been living for me. And it's not working. From this day on, I choose to live for you. I give you my life. I give you my world. Everything I do and everything I say from this moment forward is surrendered to you. You are my Lord, you are my Savior, and you are my Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, give God a shout of praise.